Welcome to COE. My name is Bob Everly. I'm with ProSub. And today's virtual presentation is about uh, the adoption challenges of MBD with uh, 3DX. We'll go, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, ProSub as a company and do a broad overview. We'll get into a little more specifics about uh, MBD and MBE. And then uh, we'll discuss some examples. So first of all, uh, ProSep is a, uh, a vendor mutual company. Um, so that means we're not uh, beholden to any of our technical partners. We're not a reseller of anyone else's products except for our own. So our own solutions are primarily revolve around um, integrations and migrations of PLM systems, uh, doing secure data exchange with uh, deep backend integrations to those PLM uh, systems or ERP, SAP systems. And then um, for uh, 3D transformation, uh, which is what we're going to talk about primarily today, we've got uh, several solutions that utilize HTML5 and 3D PDFs. Uh, Prosa has been around for over 25 years. We've got uh, some 250 employees, primarily based in North America and in Europe. Um, most of our companies are uh, leading Fortune 500 companies that you've recognized. Uh, that are large manufacturing groups. Uh, typically, these larger companies have uh, multiple IT systems, and uh, a lot of times we help them, uh, again, either do integration or migrations between the systems. And then um, our shareholders at the, at the bottom here, um, right? Uh, if you're in the automotive sector, you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, German automotive companies, and that shows that uh, the history of ProSet. Um, back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, the uh, the German OEMs and their suppliers, they wanted a more efficient way to uh, move CAD back and forth. Um, and so what they did was they came together to form an association. And this association was the ProSTEP IVIP Association, which is now a leading standards body uh, in Europe. And that group uh, came up with the CAD neutral format step. So the set files that were then uh, derived from that group, uh, there was an immediate commercial need to securely move those set files between those OEMs and their suppliers. Uh, and that's when ProSTEP AG in Germany, ProSTEP Inc. here in North America uh, were founded to be able to do that. So set, format, ProSTEP. Um, our, our vision basically is then to leverage our relationship with the IDEP Association to be able to get all those standards and the feedback from all these different OEMs uh, and then take that, uh, develop our products, and then with our products uh, start to leverage our 25 years of uh, process know-how and being able to implement uh, these solutions for companies' product life cycles. Um, so we have uh, technology partnerships with all the major PLM systems, um, some of the mid-level PLM systems, also uh, ERP systems, as well as maybe uh, SDM systems. But uh, today, uh, we're really going to be uh, looking at our partnerships with Adobe, TechSoft, and those systems. With those systems, uh, we are both a software and services partner. So on the software side, what that allows us to do is to maintain our different connectors uh, to that those uh, PLM systems, such as 3DX, or legacy, such as uh, Novia or Matrix One, uh, as well as uh, maybe some of the MRP systems, such as, uh, you know, Belmia. And uh, on the CAD side, so on the CAD side, um, right, different versions of Katia. Um, but we're also a services partner. So we team up with that, though, to help out with uh, migration or uh, integration at uh, some larger companies. So that focuses uh, all, of, all around the, the, the product lifecycle sphere. Um, again, a lot on the migration and integration side for a PLM to PLM or PLM to ERP, PLM to ALM, et cetera. Uh, also for collaboration, so um, joint venture companies that have two different PLM systems, we can help those uh, products stay kind of lockstep as they're moving through the maturation process, uh, and also through uh, secure data exchange, whether it's uh, right from a supplier up to uh, a manufacturer or vice versa. Um, today we'll talk about how we help companies through the digital transformation. Uh, so that could be uh, digital 
Digital Master Digital Twin for Industry uh, 4.0 or IoT. Um, but um, our, our concentration here is going to be on MBE. And our MBE uh, solutions uh, are delivered through 3D PDFs and HTML5. So the bottom line is that integration is really what allows you to get the most out of your model-based enterprise. And the reason that is, is um, like as, as your company starts to uh, grow, there ends up being these different offering systems for uh, different sectors within the business, right? For, for program management, requirements, uh, electrical engineering, software engineering, of course, MCAD, et cetera. But once you have these uh, various systems to help uh, develop the data, then you end up with these various repositories, typically, to help manage that data. And these repositories can be a PLM system, an ERP system, um, you know, uh, an MRP system, et, et cetera. What we want to do is we want to be able to create a traceability and have a single source of truth for as much of that information to go along with your model. So, you know, we'll start off with the typical models from MCAD and maybe ECAD. And then we'll add whatever information your specific company would like to have to be able to communicate and promote that product lifecycle. So if you want to be able to uh, also include requirements from it, maybe it's mechatronics and there's some software, different levels uh, with it. Um, we want to be able to uh, get as much information, so whether it's uh, an actual hard file or it's a metadata object. Uh, we want to then encapsulate all that information into a container. And that container uh, approach that we call that a technical data package, or a TDP. And our TDPs uh, are 3D PDFs. And those 3D PDFs then will uh, be used to communicate all this information, uh, not only internal to your organization, but you can also securely ship it outside and, um, and share that information um, downstream, whether it's with suppliers or um, potential customers. So OpenPDM is our flagship software that we use behind the scenes to provide these back-end integrations, to be able to pull the metadata and the files out of these different repositories that we have. And OpenPDM is what we use to, um, or what we call our API for the digital thread. And this digital thread right, helps to remove the traditional silos that you have uh, within your organization. You know, uh, a lot of times in the past you've had this kind of over-the-wall uh, type mentality where uh, you know, drafting has been something over design, over the production, and then over the service. Um, but we want to get away from that. And instead we want to be able to pull as much of this information from all these different groups, uh, again, into one single source of truth. So our OpenPDM solution, though, um, we have a bunch of off-the-shelf connectors already available, uh, which makes it really easy to uh, become scalable and, and to be able to grow your model-based enterprise. Uh, so perhaps, you know, you started off with, uh, you just had some CAD, maybe some folders, you want to be able to pull some information that would be able to pull that into, um, into your, into your model-based uh, design. Uh, and then you move on up to right, a PLM system, uh, such as, uh, you know, 3D experience. And that PLM system now, right, you can start uh, grabbing metadata from that, so, you know, uh, designed by and uh, last modified in any, any, of the, um, any of the fields that would be in your PLM system. And the same goes for uh, if you have, like, ERP systems or MRP systems or SDM systems, et cetera, right? You want to start being able to pull the files and the metadata all into uh, all through our open PDM and then we populate it um, through our PDF generator. And then we can securely send it outside your organization through our open DX on Global X uh, solution. So MBE. MBE is model based enterprise. And then MBD is model based definition. So uh, model based def definition is in its simplest form is really replacing the old legacy 2D engineering drawing. Um, so all that information that would come from the 2D world, uh, which is called uh, product manufacturing information, or PMI, uh, we want to then start to move that information directly onto the 3D model. Now, instead of having two different entities, a 3D model and a 2D drawing, like you just have one single entity, the, the 3D model, 
and you convey all that information, all that PMI uh, information. Now, MBE takes it to the next level where it's not so much engineering centric, um, but right, we want to start bringing in again the other the other groups within the product life cycle. Right, so um, you know whether it's the quality group or the manufacturing group, um, requirements, etc. Um, but now we want to we want to be able to move all that information also into the model based uh, uh, format. And our model based format is our TDP, our technical data package. Uh, which is all uh, contained within a single 3D PDF. So MBE is also right a standard, so it's uh, an ASME standard um, as well as uh, a NIST standard. So uh, MBE's got a lot of momentum in the uh, engineering and manufacturing realm. Tons of use cases for MBE, right? Um, uh, nice one here, be able to have you know 3D work instructions. Uh, another good one is to have a spare part uh, catalog um, to be able to validate your uh, assembly sequences. Uh, a natural one is right for collaborative design, and uh, maybe something uh, non-traditional such as um, you know uh, logistics uh, group wanting to uh, use it for um, or purchasing in logistics for maybe quotation packages. So some big advantages of a 3D PDF uh, in regards to MBE is the fact that. Um, like you can have a lot of viewable to start with uh, that can be derived from any number of CAD systems, uh, also derived from uh, CAD neutral or CAD lightweight. Um, and then uh, what's really nice about the, the 3D PDF is that um, you get very large impression ratios, you know, up to up to ten times. Companies, uh, you know, often become very sensitive to their IP, uh, so we can do different. Um, purity for your data. Uh, I mean, one good thing is if you don't want to attach the native CAD, uh, the lightweight viewable will, right, um, will not show any of that model history. But we can also go to another level and we can um, add digital rights management, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and that really locks down your IP and the 3D PDF. And then finally, uh, the fact that Adobe Reader is free and it's ubiquitous. So um, there's no additional burden as far as licenses to for the company or another company outside your organization, right, to open this up. So 3D PDF only requires Adobe Reader, uh, and right, you can open it up on on computers or uh, on mobile devices. 3D PDFs uh, are are very good because not only do they show like the model information, but um, you can show metadata from different databases. We can get into uh, audio and video. Um, we can leverage PDF uh, for watermarks and be able to add comments. So now we are we start to maybe get a feedback loop and really start to get into maybe industry 4.0. We can customize and uh, display interactive templates. And so these uh, these templates essentially would be the equivalent of an old 2D engineering title block. Um, and then, right, we can really start to lock down uh, the digital rights management and digital signatures, uh, the IP, and the not worrying about sharing these three PDFs again outside your organization. PDF is also an ISO 32000 standard, and our process solution for 3D PDFs um, also meets MIL standard 31000. So, what we want to do for thinking about our model-based enterprise is what kind of information do we want in this technical data package. Uh, so we're going to start off with a 3D PDF. And uh, you know, a natural place to start since it is model-based is with the CAD. And the CAD objects, uh, right, most typically, are going to be stored within a PLM system, or maybe you have multiple PLM systems. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter uh, to us, right? What we would do is we would start to pull the information that you would have, maybe from like a release or a change package. Uh, so uh, a natural place to start would be initial release. So the information that you have in maybe 3D experience uh, for your initial CAD release of uh, you know maybe a subassembly, um, we bring in a lightweight viewable that we create from the subassembly. We bring in the bomb structure uh, from the CAD. Um, any other items that you have that are already stored in the PLM system, such as Microsoft um, files, maybe you've got the, 
you know, an MS office uh, Word document that is um, maybe it's got signatures on it for different groups like manufacturing inspection. Maybe manufacturing inspection has their own documents, maybe some uh, Excel sheets or whatnot uh, that you already store as a part of your lease package. So we can take all those files and automatically populate a PDF with those files, and they just become attachments. So now this 3D PDF isn't just this lightweight viewable that you're able to spin around and look at, but um, it also has all the files that you want to be able to communicate uh, as a writer or as an attachment within that PDF that other people can open up. Uh, and then finally, uh, right when you start to bring in the metadata, so fields that you have in your PLM system, um, as I mentioned before, you know whether it's um, you're tracking weight or uh, you're tracking um, uh, you know uh, who, who drew it, uh, who designed it. Um, maybe going into other databases like the ERP systems for maybe effectivity dates. You want to take that metadata and populate it. MRP systems for uh, you know, manufacturing bombs. Maybe you want to include along with the engineering bomb. Uh, maybe through your ALM system, you want to have you know, a record of what software release is uh, included with uh, with this model. And then all that information, right? That that's important for your particular company's. Uh, release your, your 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 PLM right your product release cycle uh, we bundle that all up into uh, one PDF all right let's take a look at some examples of what this would look like all right um, so once you open up a uh, 3d PDF right it looks like uh, a normal 2d PDF here uh, this one we've got this particular form set up where we start to bring out cross metadata from a PLM system right revision part name when was that modified um, maybe you've got uh, some additional information, though, from manufacturing that you want to bring across, uh, some different notes. Along with that, right now we've got, uh, I scrolled down here to uh, the bottom of this PDF. The bottom of this PDF now has our actual 3D like a viewable. Right? We can activate it, we can spin it around. And because it's uh, a model-based entity, right, we're bringing across the PMI, the product manufacturing information, the uh, the notes and the details. Um, we can also, you know, uh, do special notes. So uh, here for each one of these, this detail, we've got a special note. We're going to start to um, step through some other views. So in this view, we're highlighting what's going on. In this view, we're saying what 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 are we doing? So we've got a uh, certain plating with a minimum thickness that's being called out uh, in this particular area. We can zoom up and see, yep, here, here's our dimension um, before and after the plating. Same thing with uh, where we're going to terminate uh, a surface. So we've got a chrome surface here that's going to stop in this location. Here we've got uh, an additional surface. We see here on this surface, uh, do not shot paint. So we're saying, right, this manufacturing uh, note here is on this for the surface. So right, this is, this is the PMI, the product manufacturing information that typically would have been on 2D drawing, but now we're being model centric. We're showing it um, in a 3D world, so it's very interactive. Uh, that way, uh, the manufacturing, whether it's internal or external, right, they can interrogate all this information. It's a very powerful communication tool. So we'll move on to another example, and this is going to be a, uh, a technical data package uh, to really uh, exemplify how an MBE example could be. All right, um, same thing. We've got a, a certain format. We pull across whatever information we want from PLM, ERP systems, et cetera. Uh, we can customize it with fields. Uh, so uh, like different revisions here. People can type in you know, what's going on at different levels. Um, we've got, um, let's see, we look at our attachments. And these attachments, right, these are actual physical files now that are embodied in this PDF. So this PDF has now become a container. And this container now has, right, any information from Microsoft Objects. Uh, maybe, you know, we've got a design review doc that rides along the PLM system as well as an inspection report that comes across uh, from Excel, from the quality group. Uh, maybe we are comfortable enough to actually attach the native CAD along with a CAD neutral format to step and even an additional PDF. Um, we've added an icon here for design review. 
let's launch this. We launch this, and we get uh, an additional PDF opens up. Uh, in this PDF here, we've got uh, right, our normal PDF menu on the side for right, signatures and exporting, et cetera. Collapse that down. We've got additional attachments here of more PDFs. Uh, we've got our lightweight viewable. And this particular example is a drone. We've got uh, the bill of materials with a structure that is pulled across uh, from the CAD structure. And we see it highlights over here uh, when we select it. So we open up a 2D PDF, and we see we've actually added like traditional orthographic views, just flat views of like what we are accustomed to seeing on a 2D uh, engineering drawing. Uh, so here we've got full assembly on this next sheet. You know, maybe just uh, one of the particular components. Come back here, go to our 3D viewer, and then this 3D viewer opens up another PDF. And this PDF, what we've actually done is gone ahead and we've added some animation. So, right, uh, now you're taking your model to the next level. Uh, we'll actually animate the model. So, right, this could be part of maybe a marketing document or it could be part of, um, you know, a present presentation for an internal design review so the team can see uh, the latest status of what the product looks like. Uh, as you saw on a previous uh, we can highlight different areas of this model during uh, during the animation. So very cool stuff. Um, you know, just if you've got a use case, uh, you know, MBE is 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 really the, the jumping off point to start to share all this engineering uh, information outside the organization. And then um, embedded in this, right, we've got uh, maybe an additional just um, a sheet here, a PDF, a two D sheet that has, uh, you know, different checklists or whatever that uh, you may need. It could be for design review. So one of the best things about uh, going to an MBE type platform for your uh, for your company is that, you know, this really helps promote saving uh, time and money for the company. And how do you do that? Well, by, you know, reducing variation and making less mistakes. And, and this is, you know, instead of using just snapshots in time, um, you know, for maybe uh, uh, technical spec writers, uh, instead they get, you know, real-time, up-to-date uh, 3D PDFs with all the information they need uh, for that model. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, assembly instructions for uh, maybe a services group out in the field, right? Um, again, this really takes out the guesswork. For MBE, right, we can get into uh, doing service manuals and work instructions where we can literally do like step-by-step -step, uh, animations that have these, uh, these, these, these sequences and instructions. We can even support uh, different languages uh, if you're you know, an international company. So in this example, we're starting off with our 3D lightweight viewable. We've got various uh, steps here that are going to show us the assembly sequence. And um, during this, it's all going to get animated. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Play All button. And then for each one of these steps, we'll highlight the various components right, that are getting uh, something done in that step, along with the instruction for what happens during that step. Uh, so here we've got like check the caliper, careful it might be hot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, grease the axle, do, use it with a dry rag. Um, finally, we're going to start adding on the uh, wheel assemblies and the tires. Then we're going to apply the lug nuts. Maybe we've got a uh, right, specific torque pattern that those lug nuts need to be um, assembled to. Uh, maybe a, also a, maybe a foot-pound torque for those. And uh, we're, we're going to finish up with uh, applying the backbone rack. And then the final inspection. And what happens to have, happen here is right, uh, use nitrogen to the tile tire to approximately 200 psi. So just just a really good demonstration of an assembly um, use of MBE. And then we still have our normal uh, 3D PDF here after the assembly or after the animation rather uh, that we can spin around. Pro step: um, we have the ability to do comparisons between different PDFs. Um, so this really helps, uh, again, kind of reduce mistakes and variation because 
you know, you, you may have like multiple revisions of a particular product, and um, you know, once you once you come out with a new revision, the old, and the old one is out of date, um, what we can do is we can compare we can compare the metadata from one PDF to the next to see are there any changes to the, the model trees and the part structures? Are there any changes to uh, you know the part names? Um, even if you have an animated uh, particular object, um, you know what we can do is, is see if there's a change to the components uh, for the animation. Okay, I hinted about uh, taking security to the next level. Really being able to lock down your IP for a 3D PDF, and that's through DRM or Digital Rights Management. So uh, DRM not only does it limit you know normal features from PDF like can you uh, read write say but since it's a 3D object um, you know can somebody take measurements or can somebody take cross sections of it you know you can toggle on and off uh, whether they, they have that ability and then um, of course we've got authentication through uh, various methods so that uh, you know every time somebody opens it they have to log in and when they log in it can pull in a server, uh, and the server then actually ends up building a traceability log. So you can see when somebody has opened uh, the object and every time that that has happened. And then finally, what uh, I think is, is really powerful and very cool is the ability to literally revoke the right for a user to open up a 3D PDF, even when it's left in your enterprise, even when it's out in the field, out in the wild. Um, so through the uh, 3D PDF generator server, we can uh, toggle on and off if somebody has the right to open it. As soon as you turn that off, the next time they go in to authenticate, uh, they'll no longer be able to open this up. So this is, again, really good if you have maybe old revisions that have been sent out to a supplier uh, and you don't want them to accidentally start creating parts to old revisions. Uh, you can lock down all those old uh, PDFs so that they can no longer open them. You can even put a message like uh, that, that, that would say, uh, you know, please uh, see OEM for latest rest. So uh, tons of use cases. Uh, one that I'm going to talk a little bit about in the next couple slides is uh, maybe, you know, through uh, purchasing, you've got uh, an RFQ process, the re uh, request for quote that you're going to send out to different suppliers. Um, we actually have a, a video of this one out on our ProStep YouTube channel. Uh, as well as some other uh, videos that are, that are pretty interesting about uh, 3D PDFs and HTML5 uh, to help promote MBD and MBE type of scenario. All right, so let's say you've got uh, you've got the RFQ. We're going to start off. We're going to take the uh, 3D CAD and we're going to grab a lightweight viewable and we're going to uh, maybe bring across the uh, bomb structure from it uh, through our 3D PDF generator. Uh, we'll add whatever other information you have from other databases, such as your PLM ERP, so we'll start to bring, bring across all the metadata fields. Uh, and then we can add right, to any of the other uh, physical files that you want to attach into that CDP. We'll publish it out then to uh, be able to share outside the organization. So uh, going back to an RFQ, maybe we have uh, from the ERP system, right, we've got uh, things like uh, cost. And from the PLM system, we've got uh, you know, lap modified, and we've got uh, we've got provision, et cetera. Um, now we send this out to you know maybe um, our our supplier, and it's a it's a new rev. Maybe this is you know rev D of uh, the particular product, and we have them look at it in the secure PDF, um, and we actually bring across a metadata field from the PLM system or ERP system that is able to be edited by uh, that supplier, and we allow them to then push it back up to uh, the 3D PF generator, and then we can automatically import that information back into uh, the PLM system or the ERP system. So what that means is uh, we can have a field on a, um, that, that, that let's say a cost. And because it's Rev D, maybe in this particular item we've added, you know, a, a group of holes. If we want to know what the what the effect is, the supplier looks at it and says, okay, it's going to be extra, you know, machining operations. The cost is going to go up. And on their PDF, they can, can change that metadata field to what that cost is. You know, maybe it was $100, now it's gone to $110. 
that hundred ten dollars, then they can use digital rights management to uh, surely add a digital signature, and then to lock down that PDF, and no one else can change it. Um, and then we can securely move that back up into uh, your organization. And then finally, that cost field you can automatically populate or update in your database. So if it was for Rev C hundred dollars then at Rev B, uh, we would automatically update that to be $110. Again, we've got a, a video of that, uh, that, that scenario out on our YouTube station. All right, so I've done a lot of talking about 3D PDFs, but I've hinted uh, along the way that you can also do uh, HTML5. So HTML5 is what we use then to populate web pages. So whether it's an internal web page uh, that you want to be able to do like design reviews at for a company so that you don't have to have uh, other licenses of um, you know, any types of readers, or maybe it's external, um, where you want to be able to have like a spare part catalog, so that um, you know customers after they bought your product uh, can automatically can go in and order their own parts. Um, and that's kind of a little bit of uh, this example that I'm going to show you right now. So uh, what we have here is we've got a web page, and in this web page, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say open up a 3D. And then we have our likely viewable that's been brought across from, uh, from the CAD world. Um, we'll also bring across any of the views that you have from the CAD, so orthographic views, top, front, bottom, et cetera. Um, we, can change, uh, we can change visibilities uh, just like you could in a CAD, so we can go to wireframe. Um, this person, what they're really after is they want to drill down into uh, some of the sub-assemblies and they want to get to a certain part um, that they want to order. So we've got a gasket that they drill down to, they find that gasket, and they'll go ahead and add that to a cart, um, just like you would on a, you know, a web page uh, or a shopping cart, right? Um, so we'll move back up uh, the model tree, and then we've got uh, one other uh, where part that we need to find. Uh, so we'll go through here. And we'll drill back down until we get to this sub-assembly of this connector. We find this O-ring. This O-ring, we're going to go ahead and add that to our cart as well. And uh, then we'll close down our 3D viewer, return to our home page, and then we'll check out our user cart. So our user cart has our two components. We'll say print out the order. This printed order then is going to generate a, um, a PDF, right? And the PDF then has our two components on it, and it's got where it's going to get shipped to. Um, but that PDF could actually be a 3D PDF, uh, right, instead of just a 2D one. So uh, I hope uh, this gave you a sense of uh, some of the ways that you can really promote your organization's model-based enterprise. Um, again, uh, my name is Bob Beverly. We are ProStep. Um, we're here to help you out. We've got uh, hundreds of consultants worldwide with, uh, that we can leverage a lot of experience. And, um, and again, our uh, association with IBIP, um, so we're uh, part of a lead, leading standards body. So we appreciate your time here. Um, feel, free, feel free to stop by and visit us at ProStep.us. Uh, you can also check out our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also contact me directly uh, through your email or uh, or my cell phone.